So once you have your BIOS up to date, you're going to be greeted with something like this. Now, this is an MSI BIOS. Again, there's differences amongst pretty much all the BIOSes that are out there. You'll see right up here, we have a couple boost ideas or technologies that MSI has implemented. The first is called CPU Boost. The second is XMP. Now, if you have purchased very fast RAM that you are aware of, you have to make sure XMP is turned on. That's one of the first things that you need to do right here in the BIOS. Now, MSI have made this very simple. You simply click on XMP Profile 1 if you're in what they consider the, the regular view, which is this right here. You can go ahead and turn on CPU Boost. That's going to enable the MSI built-in overclocking and tuning capabilities. Go ahead and turn it on. We're going to do some testing down the road to see if we can actually do better than what MSI can do right here, but you might as well turn it on. You have memory here, which you can see our XMP profile one is right there, which is what we absolutely want because that's what we paid for. Otherwise, we would be running at 2133, which is significantly slower than we paid for. And here are the other bits of information. If you would like to adjust or tune your fan, this is exactly where you would do this. I do recommend setting up a custom fan curve eventually, but we don't necessarily need to do that right now. See down here as well, MSI has some customizations for the kind of fan that you are actually using. This is pretty cool and pretty unique. I've not seen this particular layout before from another vendor. Now we are using a water cooler here on project seven. So we're gonna select that option. And that's gonna make sure that the fan curves and the other options are correctly identified. Now I wanna bring you over here into advanced. A lot of people are gonna start feeling uncomfortable with these changes in the BIOS at this point. Once you get into some of the more advanced items, uh, it's, it's typical for people to get pretty skittish which is understandable. You can certainly avoid damaging or hurting your system in any way so long as you don't change voltage. If you start changing voltage, that's when things can become slightly dangerous, slightly unstable. For the most part, all of the other settings are reversible, either by resetting the BIOS itself or taking the battery out and resetting the entire motherboard itself. So chances are pretty good, as long as you're not messing around too much with voltage, that a change that you make in here is going to be okay. A lot of the performance gains that you're gonna get are also gonna be here in the more advanced menu mode. So you're gonna have to get used to coming here into the BIOS, making some changes, testing things out, and seeing how it goes. That's exactly what I want to start encouraging you to think of. First place we're going to start here is in settings. I want you to go down here into advanced and in this case, PCIe. So if you recall, we have an 11th generation CPU and we have a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe installed in slot one for our NVMe. PCH is going to have that processed through the motherboard chip. CPU is going to have that chip processed directly to the CPU. And that's the lanes that we want to use. That's going to make sure that we get the maximum speed from our NVMe. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn that on. The other items in here, we're not necessarily going to make any changes to. Do note the location here of the resize bar because we will take advantage of this in a future video. I'm gonna hit escape to back up. The next one I'm gonna bring you to here is integrated graphics configuration. You see right here, IGD multi-monitor. This allows you to use the integrated graphics inside of the CPU to support a additional monitor directly from the motherboard, saving your GPU or 100% gaming. You can choose to enable this, that is up to you. If you are going to have multi-monitor setup and you want the iGPU to actually power that monitor, you would come here and enable this feature. In this particular instance, I'm only running one monitor, so we'll turn that back off and escape to back up. 
under power, I would recommend turning this on. This ensures that the devices that you connect to your PC are not only able to turn the computer on, like if you touch the mouse or press the space bar, but this also makes sure that they're getting power. So if you're trying to charge like a wireless headset or wireless mouse, this will make sure that that's gonna work for you. Wake up events, there's nothing really in here that you need to change except for this right here. Again, this is what enables the ability to wake up the system by using a keyboard, mouse, that sort of thing. So those are the advanced settings right here in settings. Let's take a trip down here to overclocking real quick. This is another menu that we're going to come back to later, but I want you to see that there are a lot of options in here. This is a very tunable motherboard. And there's a specific reason that we get a Z-Class motherboard because it gives us a lot of these various options. This is if you are running a virtualized desktop, a lot of the times things like VMware will want this turned on. So this is where you would enable that feature. Over here for overclocking profiles, you are able to not only set up a specific profile for each of these, but you can also save it to a USB. Now this is going to become very important when we start doing additional BIOS flashes. It's really convenient to have your best profile saved on a USB backup as well as these overclocking profiles because then you don't have to restore it if you ever run into that. Come here to save and exit and then save changes and reboot. And here you can see the rundown of what we are going to do. This is telling me that we've enabled Extreme Memory Profile, XMP. You can see the core voltage change there as well. Those are associated with the fact that we turned on the CPU boost. The ratio here has been adjusted. You can see the offset value there. We adjusted our M.2 NVMe. We turned on fast boot and go boot. With those changes in place, I will choose yes. And that should get your system kind of optimized the next things that we are going to do. I am the Graying Tech, a gaming insider. If you are into performance gaming PC content like this, check out another one of my videos right there. Or maybe hop over to my motorcycle channel where I do ride-alongs, 360s, and reviews.